Though most of you here know me for video, I originally did only photography and do still shoot the occasional photo session. Despite it not being my focus nowadays though, on my Instagram I still get a decent amount of messages of people asking me how to start as a car photographer. It seems the amount of new car photographers out there is growing every day, and the amount of ones that give up after a month is growing just as fast. I'm always down to help, but I am getting pretty sick of retyping the exact same long, detailed photography guidebook, especially when there are lots of complex things that are really hard to explain over text. So here is my video guide on how to evaluate your gear, pick camera settings, angle shots, and edit a photo. Now obviously that's a lot to cover in a single video and most of you watching are probably complete beginners, so I will keep things to the point and a bit simplified. So you will get all the starting info that you need, but you probably will have to look up some specifics for your camera and look deeper into some of the stuff I talk about as you get more familiar with these bare basics. But still, this will be all you need to get going and honestly be better than half of the photographers out there. The first thing to talk about is the camera gear. Now, what sucks about photography is it's very expensive. I've spent around $3,000 for my camera and lenses alone, but that being said, I also have to factor in video capabilities, so it does cost a little more. One common thing that I hear when people describe a good photo is, dang, that's a nice camera. Now, to be fair, usually spending more does typically help get better results, but this is still kind of a slap in the face to think that just because you bought a better camera, you're going to instantly get better photos. I mean, like cars, photography is a hobby for rich kids, but doesn't mean the rich kid always wins to the Honda driver that knows how to tune and take a corner. So to prove a point, I will be shooting these photos today on a used $300 camera from 2012 with a $50 manual film lens from the 80s using an adapter. Because if you are smart and skilled with shooting and editing, you can still achieve some killer results. And for the first year of my photography, this was all I used. Most beginners I talk to are shooting on Canon Rebels, which are pretty terrible cameras in my opinion. I mean, Canon as a brand has just been kind of coasting off their reputation for the past 10 years, while younger companies like Sony and Fujifilm have made actual advancements and surpassed them. I honestly think there are much better used options for a similar price, but Regardless, with the Rebels, you can still get the job done, and they are fairly comparable to the old camera I'll be shooting on, though I still much prefer this camera. And, you know, the Rebels, they are cheap, and they're everywhere, and if you already got one, you know, you gotta work with what you got, and I don't blame you. What I do honestly think makes the much bigger difference is the lens. These cameras tend to come with some 18 to 55 millimeter zoom, which is good for just shooting random stuff, but the single most important thing you should do to start is buy a 50 millimeter f1.8. If you can afford a 50 millimeter 1.4, that's even better. Now, the reason is because if we shoot wide angle, like at your 18 millimeter, we get a very distorted and not appealing look. It works for some styles, but is hard to master and hard to make not look like a phone photo. If we go more narrower and zoomed in, we get a more flattering and portrait-like look. 50mm is pretty much the sweet spot on these APS-C sensor cameras. Now, a good photographer knows when to use each focal length, as each has their advantages, but for simplicity, 50mm is definitely a good all-around starting point. Now, you may be wondering, why not just use the zoom lens and shoot at 55mm? Why do you have to buy a whole separate lens that is only 50mm? The reason is because it's not just a 50mm lens, it's a 50mm f1.8. If you look at your zoom lens, it'll be something like 18 to 55 millimeter f 3.5 to 5.6. Now the f-stop is also called an aperture, and this is how wide the iris can open on the lens. The lower the f-stop, the wider the aperture, the better the results. This low f-stop is what gives you that iconic background blur. 
probably one of the reasons you went and bought a real camera versus your phone. My main photo lens is a 56mm f1.2, so it's even better and gives me that little extra blur than an f1.8 can. Now, luckily for you, because 50mm lenses are so integral, they are fairly cheap and common. A used Canon or Nikon 50mm f1.8 is around $100, and you could probably easily find them on Craigslist, Facebook, or eBay. Again, if you have that little extra cash, I'd consider getting the f1.4 version. It'll be a better investment in the long run, but it's not the biggest deal to start. And if you just straight up can't afford a 50mm for now, then you can use your zoom lens for now. Uh, you just won't get that f1.8 magic, um, but at the least, keep the zoom to around 55. Now it's time to look at what camera settings to use. Now, how to actually adjust these is gonna vary a lot based on what camera you have, but the numbers should be pretty similar. Just look up how to actually set them for your specific camera. To start, there are three main photography settings that all people adjust while they shoot. It's called the exposure triangle. I won't get too deep into the technical details, but basically balancing these three is what makes a photo come out properly exposed. So we have aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. We already talked about aperture or f-stop. It affects how much light is let in the lens and how much background blur you'll get. Pretty much just keep it as low as possible, f1.8. You can adjust it higher if you wanna say, get more stuff in focus, but mostly just keep it simple and leave it. This also comes with the bonus of letting more light in so you can shoot in darker situations if needed. ISO is the sensitivity of the camera sensor. You also want to keep this as low as possible. On most cameras, it'll be like 100 or 200. By keeping this low, you get the cleanest possible image. If you raise it, you can shoot in darker situations, but it'll distort the image and cause noise or grain. It's like when you blast your speakers too loud and they get all distorted. So mostly just keep it at the lowest, but you will need to change it in some cases, which I'll mention in a sec. The last setting is shutter speed. This is how long the shutter is open to let light in. It's usually really quick and just a fraction of a second. Honestly, just keep this on auto while you're learning. So look up how to put your camera in aperture priority mode. That will let you pick ISO and f-stop, but the camera will pick shutter speed for you. Once you get a bit more familiar, you can pick the shutter speed yourself. This will give you a bit more control, but auto is honestly what I use myself a lot of the time, just because it's simply quicker. For most cases, this will all be fine, but if you start to shoot in darker settings, you'll notice the shutter speed gets too slow and causes motion blur. You'll even be able to feel and hear it as the shutter opens for like a tenth of a second or longer and is impossible to hold still. When this happens, what you need to do is raise your ISO to accommodate. It's a trade-off, you will get noisier images, but you'll reduce motion blur because the shutter speed can rise back up. Do what you gotta, but I wouldn't go farther than 800 max. If you still have slow shutter speeds, then you simply just need to use a tripod, which will prevent any camera shake blur. Those are the major settings to know, but the other thing is white balance. Pretty much you can keep this at auto, but it is best to set it for every shoot, especially if you shoot in the sun during the day or at sunset, set it to daylight. If you shoot at night, mess with it and see what looks best. This will keep your colors looking the cleanest and how you want. At its core, it's pretty much just a temperature adjuster that will make your photos look warm or cool. But if it's really off, your photos can even come out to pink or green. So. Though auto will normally be good enough, you should mess with it so you can get an idea of how much it affects the look of your shot. The last setting I want to mention is one that really separates the big boys from the amateurs, but comes with some complication. Your camera naturally shoots in JPEG. JPEG is good because it's a small file and can be viewed on pretty much any device. However, it's also very compressed. This is only a problem because when you go to edit it, you are very limited with what you can do because the image will start to get all gross and distorted if you push it too far. 
If you are serious about shooting, you should set your camera to shoot in RAW. RAW has much larger files, but will let you edit the photo like crazy. Like you could completely have a photo that looks black, but brighten it to look completely normal. Or you can edit your colors and white balance to be exactly how you want. Like seriously, I cannot emphasize how much more power you have with raw editing. You don't even necessarily need to set your white balance correctly if you shoot in raw because you can just adjust it to be anything after while editing. The one major downside of RAW is it can only be edited in high-end editing programs like Adobe Lightroom, which is what I use. You might not even be able to view the RAW file on your phone or computer. You will only be able to look at it on your camera or Lightroom because the file is literally RAW and other devices can't even understand them. But once you edit the RAW file in Lightroom and export, then it gets converted to a final JPEG, which is what you share and view normally. If you're unsure if shooting RAW is right for you, then you should at least set your camera to shoot both RAW and JPEG. Uh, that way you have the opportunity to mess with both. This will take a little extra space, but you know, it'll be worth it. And if you do just want to shoot JPEG, then you can uh, for a bit, but your editing will be a lot more limited. But for real, the amount of editing power you get is really what makes your photos stand out to people who still shoot JPEG. Now with settings figured out, let's actually shoot. Again, I'll be using a cheap used $300 camera from 2012 and an 80s 50mm f1.8 film lens I got for $50. It's not even autofocus, I gotta manually focus the thing. Just for comparison, I will in fact take a few on my main $1,700 camera with my $700 56mm f1.2 just so you can see how you can potentially whoop someone with deeper pockets than you. I mean, that's what I had to do for a good chunk of my career, and even now I still have to do a video trying to match people with cameras twice the cost as mine, because no matter how far you go, there will always be someone with more and better gear than you. Today I'll be shooting my Beater Celica. I would do my MR2, but I've been doing bodywork and painting the thing for over a month now, and it's still not done yet. It's really hard to say what to do to get good shots for cars because really it's something you just have to feel out yourself and get your style. Like even the weather and time of day is subjective, but I'm shooting these on a nice sunny day in the evening, so we get that golden hour light. But obviously on a cloudy day or rainy day, you can get some cool stuff too. It's just a different style. For most car shots, I like to kneel down and get really low because Cars tend to look a little dorky if taken from normal standing height. Every car is different, so you gotta find what angles make them look the coolest, especially for close-ups. I'm sorry I don't have any real specifics after that, but I will advise that you take your time with each shot. Most people get in position and snap the photo, but really look through the viewfinder and ask, is this a good shot? Get closer, back up, go higher or lower, just move around a little bit until you find the best possible angle. It's better you get a few perfect shots rather than a ton of crooked or mesh shots. The last step after shooting the photos is to edit them. There are different editing programs you can use, but I use Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's pretty much an industry standard. It can process raw files, which like I've mentioned, is super important if you want to get the most out of your photos. The only thing I dislike about it and other Adobe products is you do have to pay monthly for it, but it's fairly affordable at $10 a month and even comes with Photoshop. Again, this is Lightroom Classic. There is another version of Lightroom they have, but I don't really know much about it. It's admittedly kind of confusing that they have two almost identical names. This isn't going to be a Lightroom tutorial, but I will give you an idea of my editing style and explain each step as I go. And again, don't think you can just copy my edits exactly because every photo shoot is different and needs tweaks to be edited correctly. Even then, my editing style is just my style. You can totally have a different style and that's fine. So rather take note of how I explain my thinking for each step rather than copying exactly what settings I use. 
And last thing, again, I'm editing raw photo files. So if you are editing JPEGs, you still can learn some things, but you'll have less flexibility overall. Here we are in Lightroom in the develop tab, uh, looking at the photos from the shoot. I'm not going to lie and say this was like the greatest shoot of all time, but still we can see how small edits can make a shot cleaner. So I'll do a few from this shoot. Then I'll also, um, I got some photos from other uh, shoots, which I'll uh, edit as well. That way you can see how I apply my editing to different sets. So here we go. First, I'm going to just go ahead and kind of close those out. So. Here's the photo. Um, first thing I will do is we'll actually re-angle it. Uh, you can see it was just a little bit off center or a little bit uh, crooked. So if we mess with this, let's see where we want it, probably around there. You can compare. You can see that's already uh, definitely better. Now, the next thing is we'll mess with the white balance. So. Again, since since this is a raw photo, you can really do go as crazy as you want with it, and the image can handle it. Um, but let's just see. Uh, there's some presets here. We'll just start with daylight because again, that's when this was shot in the day. And you can see uh, that definitely, I think, helped. Uh, it's a little warmer. Uh, this still looks good if we Control Z. You'll, you'll see me oftentimes Control Zing and uh, Control Shift Zing to undo and redo, so I can compare edits. Um, you can see the original, it looks good, but considering I shot it in the sunset, uh, I do want it to look a little more warm just to kind of match that feel. So I do like this, though it's a little too warm, so I'm going to bring it a little down, um, a little bit kind of in, in the middle. So there, again, oh wait. So if you also hit, um, if you hit the backslash above the enter button, then you can uh, compare before uh, the original photo, before all your edits, and how it is now. Uh, so you can see very subtle difference, but I think it just kind of um, it kind of fits that slightly warmer vibe that I'm going for. So uh, the next thing I'll do is we can look at exposure, which I think for now is fine, so I'll leave it. Contrast, though, um, I do want to boost it. Now we don't want to go too crazy because you know, sure you can say that looks cool but i think it looks pretty bad so we just want to be a little subtle with it um i'll go maybe around here sometimes i'll go higher but considering this is already a very contrasty image with the light um, i think that's good if we again compare before and after we can see i think that looks good now highlights and shadows this is similar this this will add contrast to your uh photo but it lets you have a little more control where you can specifically adjust your you know bright spots and then your dark spots. Now most people, I feel like naturally, uh, want to raise their highlights and lower their shadows to again add more contrast. And you know for some styles this works, but I think it just kind of looks bad. <laughs> I think it just makes things look too again too punchy. Um, so I, what I do is I'll actually again you can kind of just see that before and after. It's just kind of, uh, I don't know, it doesn't look good in my opinion. So what I'll do is I actually go the opposite. I'll bring my highlights down and you can already see that really like soften the image up. It brought out a lot more detail and then I'll bring my shadows up. And now if we do a comparison, you can see it, especially in this light too, with how many like bright spots and dark spots we got. It really, really brings out a lot more detail. Um, I might even bring the highlights. I, don't, I normally keep it around 80, but I, I might bring it all the way down just because there are so many harsh spots. Uh, the shadows, though, I think are probably fine where they are. And again, that, that just, again, if we're already looking at the before and after, we're, we're definitely, that's already a lot cleaner in my opinion. So the next thing we have, uh, the sh whites and blacks kind of do a similar thing, but with, they're with your uh, you know, absolute brightest spots, absolute darkest spots. So we'll, we'll just leave those. Texture, um, this will kind of sharpen things a little bit. Uh, I always will boost this just a little bit just to, um, you know, 
it's pretty subtle you might not really be able to see it but it it just kind of um you know makes things pop a little more now clarity this one's a little hard to explain it's it also will kind of mess with your sharpness and contrast but you'll you'll see exactly what i mean when i mess with it but this is one that people i feel like tend to go crazy with because it makes your image look cooler you know but people go a little too overboard uh, and it really shows that with a lot of editing you want to be a little more subtle rather than crazy so here again if we raise the clarity to the max you can see how much it really crispens things up it, it makes things a little crazy again some people might think that looks cool i think it just looks obnoxious you know if we compare it there you know now if we bring it the other way, it'll soften the image. Obviously, this is too far. But you can see it, it softens the image a lot um, and gives it a little, a little more smoothness. Now, which way you go really determines on your style in the photo. The thing is, oftentimes, if you're shooting people, you'll, you'll go this way. Um, and then even if I'm shooting like older cars, like from the 50s, 60s, 70s, those are very smooth, very shiny cars. So I'll, I'll bring it down to kind of, you know, help smoothen those cars out and then also um, it kind of gives it a little more like soft film look but for the Celica uh, in most cars I will in fact bring it up just a little bit we don't want to go too crazy um, even with how busy this background is um, I'll even go I'll probably be a little lower than I normally would go um, just because again it's a very busy background because you can see if we go really crazy sure the car is more popping out more but the background is just gets ridiculous so let's keep it around maybe like 10 for this case dehaze um i don't think we really need to mess with this too much this all this is more kind of if you're shooting in a really sunny situation which which we are i guess i could add a little bit you can see it it, it kind of um makes things a little more vibrant so I'll, I'll do a little bit but we're in the shade so it's not too it's not as big of a deal now vibrance and saturation um Usually I do add a little bit of vibrance. Uh, the difference is vibrance is your more subdued colors. In this case, it's, go it's gonna be um, kind of the blue and then the yellow and then some of that orange you can see versus if we bring it back down, you can see it even a bit of the green. Um, and then saturation is your more dominant color. So in this case, it's gonna be that red and you can definitely see the green now. Um, Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll bring up my vibrance a little bit, but this image is pretty crazy. We got a lot going on. We got the red car, green background, golden light. So usually I would bring my vibrance up a little, but I'm going to leave it and we'll mess with colors later because um, it's a little, little crazy of an image. Now here we have our uh, tone curve. So this is similar to the highlights and shadows section that I... Um, showed before but it gives you more control over over everything so what i'll do is i'll first start in the center and i'll raise the middle um obviously this brightens the image but what i find it does is it gives the image a little more of a like airy very bright look to it um, again it does brighten the image so you'll have to move the exposure down to compensate but we'll do that in a sec then i'll add a dot here and then i'll lower the top uh, most point and what this does is you can't really see it in this image too much but what it does is it lowers your um, brightest white points your absolute white points to be a little more like of a light gray uh, let's see if we can see with control Z you can see like over here and then some of these like bright spots you can see they used to be bright white but now they're a little softer a more like light gray like I said now technically you you lose some detail with this but I find again it, it helps soften the image it's just easier on the eyes and it again adds to kind of a more film-esque look um, so that's what I do uh, and then I'll do the same thing on the bottom end I add an extra dot here because we don't want to get too crazy in the shadows but so I'll lower the shadow or raise the shadows and you can see, especially if we compare down under the car, if we control Z, you can see all the, they're all, it's like pure black, there's a lot more detail. And then if we do it, you can see it 
kind of softens it up and makes it like a, a dark gray. Now maybe I went a little far on this one, so I'll probably go in between right there. And again, it, it kind of just, it, it softens things up, you know, having like a pure white and pure black, it's just kind of, it's a little harsh on the eyes, so I like to soften things. Um, and then obviously to compensate, uh, we gotta lower the exposure, uh, maybe, maybe even like right there. That's probably good. So again, now if we look at our before and after again, I mean, we can see the image definitely cleaning up. It's looking a little more artistic. It's looking a little more um, just refined. You know, this looks like a very plain photo. It's, you know, again, I, I don't think it's like the greatest photo ever either. And then, but these edits, I feel like really help it stand out a little, a little bit more. So, um, Really the last main thing now is to mess with, uh, we have a lot of color sliders, so here you can adjust specifically values of your reds, orange, yellows, whatever. Um, I don't always mess with these, but again, because I'm not touching the vibrance and saturation sliders, I will in fact uh, mess with these a little bit. So just have a little more control over the color. So if we look at red, let's raise the saturation because you know we have a red car, so it makes sense. Uh, let's bring it up to around there, control Z. Yeah, so the car just kind of pops out a little bit more. Um, you can also actually adjust the brightness, but since it's already pretty bright, we'll leave it. And you can even um, mess with the actual shade the red is, but uh, you can make it like more pink, but we'll, we'll leave it how it is. So the other main color I wanna mess with is the green because we have a lot of green in the background. It's a little distracting. So I'm going to mess with the hue of the green. So we're gonna bring it down. This will make things a little more yellow, a little more orange. Uh, just because I feel like it'll help soften things. Uh, you know, it makes it a little less stand out. It, it fits in the background a little more and it, it also fits that, you know, sunset vibe we're going for. And then same thing with the saturation, I'll bring it down just a little bit, maybe like right there. So again, it fits in the background a little more. If we if we uh, undo these, you can see it kind of, again, it just kind of makes the, the photo feel a little more refined, a little more uh, like the colors kind of all fit together more. Uh, the last thing I'll do even, I'll, you can see there's some blue in the pavement here that's a little stand, standing out. So, you know, if I, if I raise it, you can see it there even on the windshield. So I'll, what I'm gonna do is I'll bring this down just a little bit, just so it's kind of a little more in the background. Now, I, that's mainly it. I, I think the last thing I'll do is, uh, I oftentimes will add vin a little bit of vignette. Um, what this does is it, it'll like darken your corners, but you can also lighten them. Now this lens I shot on has some vignette just cause it's like old fashioned. Um, but I will still just go ahead and add a little bit right there. Again, we can see the before and after. You can see it just, it helps like focus the image a little more um, on the subject, which in this case is in the center, so it's perfect. And it just kind of, uh, I don't know, again, it just kind of brings the image together. So that's pretty much it for this image. I would say it came out pretty good, uh, especially if we look at the before. I mean, that just looks like, <laughs> You know, it's not like a bad photo, but it, it just looks really plain, really meh. Colors are a little weird, the lighting's weird, and here we really, I feel like, really brought it out. Um, it looks a lot more refined, a lot cleaner, a lot crisper, but at the same time, it's also softer and easier on the eyes. So, you know, I'd say that's pretty good. I think we can, uh, I think we can agree on that. Real quick, if we compare this photo to the one I took on my nice, expensive camera with my expensive lens, then we can see how they compare. Now, obviously, they aren't the same exact photo because the angle and light is a bit different, but still, you can see how the cheap camera done right and edited can beat the expensive camera done wrong. The expensive camera does have an advantage as the shot is sharper and the background is smoother, but the white balance is completely off, the colors are meh, and the image overall is too dark. Plus, it's crooked too. And on top of that, if we use similar editing to both photos, you can see how close they really are. 
Again, the expensive camera has that slight quality edge for sure, but would you really be able to tell the difference at first glance, especially when there is over $2,000 in difference? All right, so now that we have this uh, photo edited, I'm going to quickly kind of go through the other photos or just a couple of them and show you how we can quickly edit them to match. So the thing is, since these photos are from the same shoot, we can actually just copy and paste a lot of the settings over. So we're just gonna control C, command C, whatever. And then we go to the next photo and we'll paste it. Now, at first glance, this isn't quite what you'd expect because the photo you know, it doesn't look the same. And it's because, you know, the photo, it just is a different photo. You know, the colors are a little different. It's a little more in the shade. Um, you know, it's just angled completely different. We don't have any of that green background and everything. So what you do is though you can't just get away with a complete copy and paste, you can still use that as kind of a base. So let's just kind of go through here. I'll probably lower the reds a little bit, bring that down. Let's brighten the image up probably good honestly that's already pretty good I might even just add a little more vignette since it's a little more of a dramatic photo and then the other thing too is you can see uh, this photo is a lot warmer because um, there's a little more Sun while this one's a little cooler because you can see the car is more in the shade so I'll probably add a little bit of warmth back to it just to kind of match a little but it still looked it still looked good as was I just kind of want to match them a little better all right, now let's just quickly do the same thing to the third photo. We'll just paste the settings over and make our tweaks. So first thing, let's get it angled properly. Now, again, we got some kind of weird colors going on, so I'll warm it up a little. Um, honestly, that's already pretty good. <laughs> I think I just need a little bit of uh, white balance shifting. I might even, uh, again, add a little more vignette just because it is a little more of a dramatic photo and I mean if we look at the before and after that's already pretty good I might even just raise the exposure a tiny bit because it's it's a hair dark but I don't want um this front end to be to be too bright so yeah I mean you can kind of see just how quick that is uh when you have similar photos from the same set uh you can quickly just copy and paste and make some small tweaks to things and there you go. Now I do have photos uh, from some other shoots uh, that I want to edit as well. That way you can just kind of quickly see how my editing process applies to these different situations. But the thing is I don't want this to take forever. So I'm going to throw these at the end of the video. That way, you know, if you want to see more editing, you can, but I think I'll just wrap up the video for now and you'll have that as a little bonus. But yeah, that's about all I got to say if you want to start learning car photography. Obviously, just know photography is an art, and though I gave some tips to try, there isn't any real checklist of things you should do in order to get a perfect photo, because in the end, it all depends on a ton of factors and what works in the moment. Like, it all depends on what you're shooting, where you are, what the weather is, how the lighting is, and even just what style you're going for. If you simply use the same exact process every shoot, then you're missing out on unique shots every time and not growing. So try to maybe focus on perfecting these tips, then once you're comfortable, expand out and try new things. Though these tips are a good starting point, it really does come down to experimentation and experience to make a great artist. And honestly, if you want to be a photographer, then you probably already have some ideas in your head of what looks good. So just really envision things and try your best to work out how to make it real. And you know, if it doesn't come out the first try, then don't worry, you'll eventually get there. Hope this all helps. If the video does well enough, I'll consider making a follow up on how to shoot low light night photos because that's more my style personally, but they are a little more complicated to do as a beginner. I've even been considering making a video on my process for shooting videos, but that's a completely endless rabbit hole of information, so that'd be a little trickier to do. But anyways, thanks for watching and thanks to my patrons. 
Uh, for any new photographers watching this, good luck and maybe someday I'll see your photos on my Explore page. All right, here is the bonus editing session. Everyone here uh, watching still, you guys are the real ones. So let's quickly go through these. I'm gonna be a little uh, faster at these just cause I think now that you get kind of my ideas uh, surrounding my decisions, I think, uh, you know, we can kind of bust them out a little faster. So exposure here, uh, white balance first off, I think looks, looks great. Um, exposure looks good, contrast. We'll, uh, we'll add a little bit. I might even go a little harsh on this one. It's because it's not, it's a pretty soft image as is. It wasn't like the other one where it was like really crazy. Highlights though, uh, of course, gonna bring this almost all the way down uh, just because we got lots of brightness, especially because the car is white in itself, you know? So you can especially see here on the, the headlight, it's, uh, it's like almost pure white. So we're gonna bring that down. <clears throat> Shadows, uh, there's nothing too dark. I will still bring them up as usual, but I don't need to go like as far as I, you can see like that's too far. I'll probably bring them around like there. Whites, blacks, we can leave. Texture, we'll add some just to kind of add a little more, uh, a little sharpness to the image. Okay, let's see, very subtle. Clarity, I think I'll add some again. Again, there we're just kind of bringing out the image. There's a kind of before here, it's subtle, but sharpens things up. Now, dehaze, I didn't use last time because we were mostly in the shade, but here I'm shooting in direct light. You can even see there's a flare going across the image. Um, so we are shooting in harsh light, so I will actually dehaze this one a little bit. We don't want to go too crazy because it starts to get, again, gross. But we do want a little bit just so it can, uh, if we compare, you know, it, it kind of just darkens. It kind of makes the image just a little more, uh, a little more how it should look. Vibrance, uh, again, last time I didn't mess with these because um, the photo had such crazy colors going on. I, I used this, but for here, everything's a little more subtle. So I will just uh, add some vibrance, you know, again, don't go too crazy, but, but if we just add a little to make things pop a little more, I think that's, Oh, whoops. I think that's, one sec, sorry. Again, very subtle, but it makes things just a little more, especially the background, just a little more um, kind of pop. So <clears throat> now tone curve, we'll do my normal thing. You can already see, especially in this like bright light, that I think that really makes it kind of, um, that alone there kind of makes everything a little brighter and airier. Add that, drop that down like I mentioned. I think you can actually, you can really see it in the background and on the car in this one versus the other one you couldn't really see too clear, but you can see this is all like pure white, but here it's a little more, a uh, little more softened out, you know? Okay, then we'll raise this up. And yeah, that's already pretty good. Uh, I'll add a little bit yet. Again, you don't always want to go too crazy with this, but we'll, we'll just add a little bit. And I'll maybe bring the exposure down a tad. Honestly, I think it's good, but I'll bring it down just like a hair. But before, again, it's a good photo, but it's overall pretty plain, but it, it is clean. But you can see that edit really just kind of brought things out, uh, made things stand out a little more. Um, overall, I'd say good. Uh, now we can go ahead and just copy this to the next photo. This one here, uh, I don't know what happened. A cloud must have passed over, but it, it is a little different. But if we paste it, you can see it's overall darker. Um, I don't think we need the dehaze. I can tell that's already a little too much. But then if we brighten it, let's fix it. It's a little crooked. I feel like even the white balance might be a little off, but it's... Not too bad. Honestly, like I'd say that's pretty freaking good as is. I might even uh, add a tiny bit more contrast since it's a little more dramatic of a photo, a little more vignette it's for the same reasoning. I could probably mess with the white balance, but honestly, I think that's pretty good. Might... So cool. Uh, we can mess with this 
dots in photo next. So again, we can just paste over the settings. Now this is too bright, so we'll darken things. And I really wanna bring out the blue more specifically, because it's a, it's a very pretty car, especially the paint. So if we just kind of saturate that blue a little more, Again, that, that's honestly a little far in the saturated side, but I think just because it's such a nice paint, I think it really, and you know, it's a very close up image. I think it really brings it out a little. And again, we can see the before and after very good. It's a good photo, but overall a little plain. This one here just kind of sharpens things up. It looks, it looks a lot nicer. I could almost want to add, yeah, if we add a little more vignette again, I, I like to add a little more vignette on these more dramatic photos like that, um, but I mean, there you go. <laughs> you can Again, you can see how quick I normally edit these things. Um, we'll do this last one here with the truck. Um, again, I think this might just be a straight copy and paste. Ah, it's not too perfect. It's a little bright, so, but the lighting's pretty similar, so bam, you just kind of Sorry, I don't know if you can hear this helicopter <laughs> flying overhead, but I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a little, just a hair crooked, I think. I could be wrong though. I feel like, I feel like maybe it's not, but either way, you get the idea. So that's kind of, I mean, bam, that's four, uh, four photos edited right there all from the same shoot, and they all, I think, look a lot better uh, than they did. It's the before and after of that one. All right, so the last uh, two photos I'll edit are of uh, my friend's S13. Um, I, I picked these ones because they're uh, a little different than, you know, the sunny photos that we did before. So let's start. Uh, I like to do dark photos too, just because I feel like you can get a little more creative with it. Um, so first off is the white balance is a little weird because you know we're shooting in a parking garage and it's there's kind of a lot going on. So I'm gonna just kind of mess with this until I feel like it looks good because sometimes that's just the best way to do it. And our and our tip is sometimes you can do the auto and go from there, but I still think that looks pretty bad. So let's just kind of just kind of swing it around. So I feel like almost I feel like that looks a little better if we compare. Um, and then this one, okay. See that's looking better. Maybe add a little more to this. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I think that's better. We compare it. It's subtle, but this is just a little too blue. Very subtle difference, but I think I think it's overall just a little cleaner. Hopefully you can see it through the video. <clears throat> Exposure, I think is fine. We'll add a contrast. I'm gonna add a little more than normal, just cause again, this is a very uh, dramatic photo. Highlights we'll bring down. I don't need to go too crazy cause it is pretty dark. So we'll just go around there. Uh, shadows. Uh, you, I don't want to raise them too high because again, the whole point of the photo is it's very dark. So I'm going to probably only raise them maybe, maybe to there. Let's do a little comparison so far, so you can see we're cleaning things up. That light's a little more tamed. We're getting some of the shadows back. Um, let's see. So now texture, we'll do a little more than normal 25 because I really. Again, want a very stylized photo. We'll add a little more clarity than normal too. Let's see, we'll do a comparison still. Looking, looking good. Dehaze, I don't think we gotta worry about because you know there's no sun. We could still mess with it, and you you know it still does. It still does kind of add a cool effect, but I'm I'm gonna leave it. Maybe we'll mess with it later. Now, vibrance and saturation, I um. You know, normally I would boost the vibrance, but in this photo here, I think, cause you can see the vibrance here is the blue kind of tint and the saturation here is like, 
I don't even know. It's also like a different blue tint. I think I'm going to lower the vibrance just a little bit because, yeah, you can kind of see it's just like a little cleaner. It's not quite black and white, but it's just here. We just kind of have a little bit too much like ambient color going on. So I'm going to lower that, but I will bring the saturation up a tiny bit so we can kind of it's still not again very subtle but you can kind of see I feel like before if we undo all that the color is just a little weird I don't know how to describe it but I feel like this we kind of brought down some of this um, more ambient color and then just kind of made some of the more dominant colors pop out so a little weird but I think it looks better I think it looks better I mean you could even leave this down and go with that where it's a little less color but I kind of kind of want just a tiny bit especially because we got the purple like headlights right there um, then I'll do my normal thing I won't go too far because um you know the it's a pretty dark photo so we don't want to go too crazy lower that and because there is a lot of dark we don't want to raise this too high because you can quickly see how much it affects it though again it kind of looks cool but we'll, we'll keep it a little more tame a little more there can I see we see how it came out I'm going to then add some vignette we're gonna go pretty hard on it this time because again especially with these darker photos I feel like it kind of um fits the vibe more versus when you're shooting in light uh, you don't necessarily want too much vignette but I think there you can see it really it really like emphasizes the darkness of the garage like it makes it seem it, the vignettes nice because it we could just darken the whole image but then the car gets too dark so I, I like the vignette because you can darken the surroundings but keep the car itself or your, you know like the center of your photo um, still uh, nicely lit so you can see I mean we took kind of a, again like a meh kind of okay photo and really kind of just like brought it out made it look a lot more just like punchy a lot more kind of controlled and stuff I almost even want to um, bring down the orange a little bit the only trade-off is he has some orange on his car but the kind of this background orange here is a little distracting doesn't fit so I'm gonna bring that down a tiny bit but you can see uh, definitely an improvement so again we'll just quickly copy and paste it to this close-up of the car um, and bam you can see just how quickly that that made a difference I mean especially you can see a lot of the detail in the highlight or in the headlights kind of came in uh, since we lowered the the highlights down but we don't have all of it cuz well yeah <laughs> I still think that looks better than having this super bright. You get a little more detail back, but it's still, um, it's just, it just kind of fades in a little. It's, it's just a little smoother, you know? Raise the exposure a little bit. I feel like it might be a little crooked too. So let's kind of mess with that. There you go. I mean, that's the before and that's the after. So <laughs> I think, I think we definitely made it a little nicer. But yeah, that's uh, that's all the editing I got for um, for this video. Hopefully, that's a good amount of kind of just like tips and like you know examples. Uh, so hopefully, you guys kind of have an idea on you know my process and what you can do for your stuff uh, as you know you practice and shoot in different environments. Anyways, thanks for watching.